Joining us now from New York with the president's perspective is Tony Sayeg, senior White House advisor, former Treasury Department spokesman, and one-time Fox News contributor. And Tony, Nancy Pelosi, as you know, has been holding back the articles of impeachment, saying she wants to pressure the Senate into a fair trial. Even the press has been skeptical, not clear what she's trying to accomplish. How does this affect the president, and how does it affect your planning? Howie, it's good to be with you. Thanks for having me. Sure. Uh, look, I think what Nancy Pelosi has done is two things. Number one, she's exposed what we've been saying all along, which is this is a complete sham, and impeachment's been weaponized by the Democrats on a hyper-partisan basis uh, to be a political tactic against the president, not what the Constitution and our, and our framers had all intended for impeachment, number one. Number two, after completely controlling the process in the House, completely depriving the president of any rights in that process, no uh, rebuttal evidence uh, allowed to be introduced by our side, they controlled all the witnesses, okay? They still could not prove their case. They advanced two of the weakest articles in the history of impeachment that don't even have in them the crimes they alleged throughout the entire hearing in the House that he committed, bribery, extortion, quid pro quo. Um, so now she's stalling this after completely convincing her caucus that they had to rush to vote to this by Christmas. And you know what, Howie, I heard a lot on Wednesday from House Democrats that no one is above the law. Right. But they're treating the president like he's beneath the law. Nobody in this country well, deserves this type of unfair treatment, let, let me alone jump the in. president. Uh, yeah. The president said, we played this earlier, that it doesn't really feel like he's being impeached. But even though it was clearly a party line vote, um, the media are certainly acting like this is a crucial and a stark a moment and democracy is at stake. So is the president trying to create a kind of an alternative reality? Look, I, I think he's expressing uh, what, what a lot of Americans are, are seeing, which is that people understand this has unfortunately become a completely hyper-partisan sham process, not what impeachment should ever have been. It's an abuse of Congress's power that Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff have, have, have put on the country. And the president's focused on doing his job, serving the American people. Think about the last month alone, Howie, what we've had by way of the job market, record stock market, wages and paychecks going up for the first time in 10 years, two major trade deals with our biggest trading partners. And when you talk about the media and the media coverage, there was an analysis done in November uh, that showed 96% of the coverage on the evening news networks were negative stories on impeachment. Okay, there was a poll, morning well, consult poll on, in November. It, it's kind of hard to write a lot of positive stories when a president is being impeached for the third time uh, in American history, which is not to say there's not another side. And certainly the Republicans' we're arguments not, of fairness need to be covered. But, you know, we're not it, talking, it, it, it is a huge story. They don't have to be positive. They have to be fair and balanced, and they're not. It's completely skewed. And in that, in, in another poll in November, Morning Consult, 60 percent of Americans, this is important to the media who wants, if they want to have the credibility uh, to deliver news to the American people, 60 percent of Americans said that impeachment was more important to the media than to them. In that same poll, 66 percent said it was important to politicians uh, more than them. So they basically think that the media and the Democratic uh, politicians are basically together on this. That's a very bad way to be perceived by the American people who you have to have the credibility with to deliver the news. Well, that might explain why the president continues uh, to beat up on major news organizations whose coverage uh, he believes to be unfair, and sometimes he's taking some shots at Fox as well. I want to turn now to uh, what something the president said that's drawn a lot of criticism at the rally uh, in Michigan, uh, where he talked about Debbie Dingell, House Democrat who voted uh, to impeach with the rest of her party, and reference to her late husband, the late Congressman John Dingell. Uh, this is the president describing a uh, phone call they had after John Dingell's death. Thank you so much. John would be so thrilled. He's looking down, he'd be so thrilled. Thank you so much, sir. I said, that's okay, don't worry about it. Maybe he's looking up, I don't know. Well, I love my husband, as you well know. We had a love affair, most never have. And it's going to be, a, it's been a hard holiday season. He said what he said, and it hurt, and I'll leave it at that. Now, Tony, uh, Britt Hume said that the comments were gratuitous and politically dumb. Neil Cavuto said beyond cruel. Even some of the supporters in politics, former Senator Rick Santorum on CNN, said he should apologize. Lindsey Graham said it wasn't funny. So why um, did, he, did he say this about uh, a congressman who's no longer with us? Let's not forget that what he was talking about. He had the flag uh, flown at half staff uh, mm -hmm. to, to honor the, the death and the legacy of Congressman John Dingell. Uh, we obviously respect his memory and his legacy. We respect the service of his wife, who now has this congressional seat. Uh, Howie, you see what's happening. The president's been attacked 
relentlessly for over five since he came down the escalator at Trump Tower. We say the last uh, three years. It's actually been longer than that. And you know, he was at a rally, and 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 the president sp you know speaks his mind. That's what we've come to expect of him. You don't have to like everything he says, but he's at least authentic, and he, uh, that's why I think so many American people feel a connection to him, and they know that he's he's always going to to speak what's on his mind. You know, the press has also been very critical lately of Mitch McConnell, Senate Majority Leader, uh, for openly saying that he's working very closely with the White House, with people like you, uh, on the Senate trial, and that there's not going to be any difference between the two sides. And, and the criticism from the media is that he's hardly an impartial juror. Your thoughts? Look, I, I think that uh, it's going to be pretty hard to believe that Chuck Schumer is an impartial juror either. Uh, clearly, there is going to be an opportunity in the Senate to grant the president a fair process that he was deprived in the House. I believe we'll get there. Don't forget, in 1999, the precedent set by the Clinton impeachment had 100 senators voting for it. And I do think that Leader McConnell uh, wants to have a bipartisanly approved process, something, again, that did not happen in the House, and, and one that gives the president his, his real rights and, and an opportunity to have a fair trial. And finally, Tony, uh, with the president, of course, he's had this battle with what he calls fake news uh, pretty much from the campaign on. Um, but the continuing attacks uh, on the media and the media coverage of impeachment, is he now running in 2020 as much against the media as he is against the Democrats and against impeachment, which the campaign is advertising about? They think it helps uh, your side. Look, I, I just think I would turn that question on the other side. You have to really look at the media coverage of this president since the very beginning and really try to figure out, um, is it beyond just bias? Have, has the media given the president and his supporters a reason to believe that they're part of the resistance against him? In some instances, I, I think that that could be an argument that uh, the president certainly could make. But at the end of this whole, whole thing, what Donald Trump does is directly communicates with the American people. Mm -hmm. That's why he is as successful as he is. And that's why you see the support for him increasing throughout this entire impeachment process, because people know the president is fighting for them. Right. And what they see are the Democrats and, in some cases, members of the media who are attacking him. So that's not a way you get support from the American people is to attack the guy right. who they think is standing up for them. Yeah, in some cases there's visceral hostility in some members of the media, and I think others try to be fair, and that's where the debate lies. Tony Sag, we very much appreciate your coming on. Happy holidays. Good to see you. Thanks, Howie. Same to you.